is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. With his naked and afraid co-host, John Shevsky. That's the second time you've been naked and afraid on our introductions. I'm always naked, and I'm always afraid. You're a lot like my new baby. <laughs> he's naked, and he's so afraid of everything. I'm the, I'm the training for your baby. You I, are? That's, they sent me in. The good Lord sent me into your life so that you could practice and be ready for your bambino. That would explain so much, because uh, you, you poop when you shouldn't, mm -hmm. and you you cry all the time. I poop when I shouldn't, and I cry all the time. And you love it when, when you play, I play the, the music. music. Cry is the show that starts now. Oh, like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to, to me. Him. Don't you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. What's up, criminals? Uh, this is the most rested I've been in weeks. because How much uh, sleep did you get? To, I mean... I don't know. Probably I went to bed at 10, which I haven't done. Oh, that is a weird time. I wake weird. up at midnight when I go to bed at 10, and Dude, I do go to bed at 10 sometimes. I've been going to bed at 4 in the morning for yeah. the majority of my adult life. Same here. I went to bed at 10 last night, oh, yeah. and I woke up at 7. And oh, I, I mean, wow. I woke up in the middle of the That's night to nine do some hours. feedings and stuff. That's nine hours. No, but there were feedings in the middle of that. You know, like feedings oh, and changing Oh, for the baby, not yeah, you. Yeah. Where you're, I want some lasagna. <laughs> no, it's three. <laughs> no, no, but I'm the most rested I've been, and that's how. That's great. That's And I'm excited. to do. We haven't done, we haven't been able to actually be together to record an episode in a while. Yeah, this and, is great. Uh, and I feel really good about I'm it. I'm hard. You're hard. Oh, we're, so. We're excited. And you know what, guys? Sometimes you're in your backyard, and you're hard with a friend. And you're like, this is uncomfortable. And that's one when you might need uh, uncomfortable friendship insurance from our good buddy Joe Earl at C3 Risk and Insurance Services. Guys, Joe is a longtime friend of mine. He's also an insurance broker. What does that mean? That means that he will He's go out Jewish. and find the right insurance for you, also Jewish. Well, you said that. What does that mean? So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he, well you, need, you want a Jew finding your He's insurance. Jewish. I'll just He's Jewish. He's trustworthy. That right now. You can have both of those in the same Venn diagram. Don't worry, world. Whatever kind of insurance you need, a uh, home, auto, dick, uh, boner, around a friend insurance. You've used dick insurance so many times on these ad reads. <laughs> Actually, uh, if you do call him up, Joe will probably congratulate you on receiving your dick insurance. Oh, yeah. He'll give you a little plaque, a little certificate that says dick insurance from C3 Risk. Yep. Uh, you can do that at C3insurance.com backslash Joe or call him 619-233-8000. Hey, if you get a policy from him, you get $25 towards Amazon. Dude, tell him Shesky sent you. Hell he loves to me. the yeah. Yeah. And he if you're things. not in the insurance market, maybe you're in the art market, and you'd like something from our good friend D. Kettleson at A Piece That Remains. Da, 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 da. Sometimes da, 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 da. you want to paint it. And that painting da, 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 da. might be to honor somebody's memory. And I call this A Piece That Remains. Da, 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 da. James Hetfield sponsors it. He's a huge fan. He's so all about it. Guys, D. Kettleson from A Piece That Remains. Uh, she does some really cool painting. Some of them are just normal paintings. Some of those paintings incorporate the ashes of your dead loved one or pet. Sometimes uh, they'll have other people's ashes. I mean, Dee is just throwing ashes around over there. Like, it's, she's like a crazy chef in a French cartoon. You could ash a cigarette ashes. if you wanted to. But either way, look, the, we, we'll put some more stuff on the Instagram. Her art is dope. You can find it at remains.com. A P-E-A-C-E that remains.com. Uh, she'll hook you up if you tell her that crime sent you. And, oh, yeah. Uh, tell her Shevsky sent you. Wait, tell her I sent you. Tell somebody that I sent you. No, don't tell anyone life. Slayton sent you. They're like, oh, Slayton? That's a 30% tack on we got to add there since we know him. It's uh, called an uh, asshole charge. She's our good friend. She supports the show. She's she's part of what she's makes amazing. this thing happen. She's amazing. And we love her very much. And she's not really spilling the wrong ashes into different people's stuff. She's not yeah, sloppy. No, she's, she's good at, she's she wears, good like, at making choices. She wears, like, medical gear. She's sponsored by, I don't like, think that's true. Sterilite. And, Probably uh, not she's accurate. Cert she's certified to make art out of ashes. Yeah, this is, now this has gone off the she, rails. What? Uh, also, if you want to support the show, our Patreon, patreon.com backslash crime with and three And still eyes. a Patreon remains. And you can go on there, join the Sticker of the Month Club. Oh, yeah. And have Shevsky design and send you something. Well, he'll design it. I'll send it because that's how this whole relationship works. That's how it works. Slayton and, cracks the whip, and I'm the little Asian kid in the sweatshop. And he'll make something inappropriate. He keeps trying to put a, a, a picture of our old logo with my head being a penis, and I'm not going to send it to people. Wait, did you not get that one printed for this month? I thought for that's sure never, out of the one they sent you that was what's That is never. I'm never sending people. 
people, a Listeners, picture of my head is a dick. Patreon subscribers, That's email us. That's never happening. We do what you guys ask. This is a democracy Look, here. If the if entire that, Patreon votes in favor of the dickhead picture, I will send it. Other than that, I am not. I am not putting our whole livelihood and shows at risk by sending people unsolicited dick pics through the federal mail system. I'm calling upon you, Patreon subscribers. This is your choice to act now. Speaking of uh, sending unsolicited dick pics to the Flex federal mail vote. system, our guest today has never done that. But uh, he is a fantastic human being, a fantastic. wonderful comedian. Very funny has, man. Uh, has a great show at the Improv in Hollywood that uh, that I it, with our friend Stuart Thompson. I can't remember the damn name of the thing. He'll tell you what it is because uh, I didn't prepare because I have a fucking baby, guys. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, so please put your virtual hands together for our good buddy, Luke Schwartz. Hey. That's what I expected. Nice. May the I Luke Schwartz be with you. And I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> oh, keep, oh, you should have kept waiting. Um, it's See, really I told nice you to be funny. here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you enjoy your trip deep to the valley? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're in a cul-de-sac, which is really nice. So mm -hmm. if your kid doesn't grow up to be a sports star, that's all on you. Mostly that. Yeah. I mean, he is a Jew, so it's like a very more like a sports agent. But whatever, you know, he'll enjoy baseball and then... Yeah, we, involved we, somehow. We had Sandy Maybe. Koufax like 80 years ago. We get some athletes in there, right? Fair enough. Sure. Kobe yeah. Bryantstein. Yeah. He's Jewish. He's very good. Right? Wayne Gretzkowitz. Uh, Michael Jordan Steenenberg. Rod, Rod Carew, he converted, right? No, that's the Adam Sandler reference. Yeah. That's uh, copyrighted. Luke Short. <laughs> Not to be confused Did you say Luke Schwartz? with Luke uh, Schwartz. I got called that a few times. Two different people entirely. What? During was the... born on January 22nd, 1854 in Polk County, Arkansas. Oh, so we're learning about Luke Short. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. That's the person. Oh. We're not talking we're, about you. Uh, yeah. And your no, little, we, weren't, okay. we weren't just insulting your you. indie film try a try again so with your little short films. Luke's always making short films. He was the Great. fifth of nine kids by Josiah Short and Hetty Brumley. Did you say Josiah Short? Josiah. It's been a little while okay. since I've recorded this show, Jonathan David. Okay. I All will right. be good. And Hetty Brumley. Four Hetty? Hetty. Hedley. He yes. It's Hetty. 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 Hedley. Hetty. Yes. Yes. Four years later, the family resettled in Cook County, Texas, where Josiah entered the cattle business, purchasing a large block of land on the Elm Fork of the Trinity River. As it turns out, that wasn't the best place to settle because the neighbors weren't exactly friendly. What kind of neighbors were they? Cowboys with guns just shooting off all the time? Are y'all black or Jewish? Hang him high, boys. I wonder if he'll get to it. That's, <laughs> it seemed like it would be the next sentence. That's why I couldn't let him just have it. You, you can't just let Slayton just have the next sentence. He's got to earn it. I it see. makes him stronger. Look at these biceps. He has to climb. It's uh, like training with weights, like resistance weights. That's weight. right. Yeah. That's right. It's like yeah. training. It's beach day training. I'm the nephew on John his ankle Shefsky. if he's trying to walk. <laughs> sure. He is right. my life. He's my resistance band for life. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. It seemed like that during the ad reads, too. That's a, <laughs> that's a charming nickname for me. Go on with your motherfucking story, asshole. Oh, I will. Glad you're not. <laughs> Glad you're when not Luke was about eight it. years old, his father was working in the yard when he took two arrows in the head from a band of Comanche warriors. Oh my God, this got sad and scary right two away. Arrow. That's good shooting. I know, right? Two. Not just <laughs> was one. he still standing up after the first arrow, or did they shoot him after he was he on die? the ground? Luke, well, him, maybe Luke, the next sentence will Luke, be. Why don't you let him? Yeah, yeah. Luke, let him finish. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out, Luke, if you let him finish. Wow, the tables have really turned. No, Luke's this older is, brother. It's a solid picnic table. It's not moving. Actually, it did move. That's how. That's why we're out of the shade, into the shade, and not in the sun. Okay. But whatever, it's fine. Not a big deal. Two shade. Luke's older brother grabbed a rifle and a handful of bullets, then rushed to help as Josiah took another wound from a knife in the back. He made it in time to arm his father. <laughs> But the bullets did not fit the rifle. Oh, that's such bad luck. Mm -hmm. Oh, and oh, good lord. Wait, so the, the you guy. You grabbed the small bullets. Yeah, I don't think his dad was like mad at him at that point. There's his only two kinds like, of bullets big bullets and small bullets. I imagine his dad didn't say anything. He probably looked at it and then passed out. It was like. He has, so he has two arrows in the head and then he took a knife wound. Yeah. And he still is walking around. Well, I mean, they just made people this, tougher this is back the, yeah, then. Yeah, it's it's the Texas. Yeah. It's the I guess so. You've never been knifed in Texas? Yeah. Josiah yelled, get back in the house and get the right gun. So he can oh, still yeah. use his Now mouth. that's good fathership <laughs> that's... or whatever you call it. Fatherhoods. While he used the rifle as a club, <laughs> swinging it to keep the Comanches at bay. I, I got to like see this as uh, a picture. There's Comanches, people that have bows and arrows that are all physically fit in the old days, right? Mm -hmm. And he's just swinging you know, a rifle and they're fat... like, whoa, 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 whoa. They might have some fat Comanches. Right? Yeah, they're like I I, only, you, I use the part of the buffalo that that we shouldn't use. <laughs> I just eat the fat part. The part with all the carbs? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Is there a carb the, the gluten part of it? Am the, I right? The gluten buffalo? Yeah. You guys like those buffalo sandwiches? That's what I'm into. That sounds delicious. There's a Bob Marley song about that. Buffalo sandwich. 
Rather than get the gun himself, the older short boy yelled at his eight-year-old brother to do it for him. You get the gun. No, you get the gun. No, you get the gun. <laughs> Boys, I'm bleeding to death. Yes, an eight-year-old, too. An eight-year-old? Like, I guess I'll get the gun. <laughs> like, yeah. like, an eight-year-old? Man. <laughs> it can't really. Okay. I don't, wouldn't trust. Young Luke ran inside, found the rifle, and tried to take it out to his father. But it was too heavy for the third grader to heft. Mm -hmm. So Luke dragged the rifle all the way to his brother, who finally picked it up and got it to dad just in time to mount some sort of defense. While mom put a stop to her husband's severe bleeding. Did someone have the remote control from Click or whatever? They're like pausing the Indians as they're like stabbing and shooting. Well, like, I guess they were out of arrows by this point. I don't seven know. minutes for my young boy to get this thing. Just pause it, son. Hit the pause button. Out of arrows. That's the part of the story I don't really understand is how they like, well, we got him with two arrows. I guess we're out of arrows. And knives. Are the other Native yeah. Americans are just and like, there's more of Did us. you grab enough arrows? Jesus Christ, Frank. You, you never bring enough arrows. How? Am I supposed to remember to bring so many arrows? <laughs> Go on with your story. <laughs> <laughs> While mom put a stop to her husband's severe bleeding, the short boys helped drive the attackers away from home, saving their good old dad. Oh, they saved Papa? Yeah. Oh, cool. So I guess the arrows grazed him. I mean, they hit him in the head. I don't know how hard or on Thicker point. Thicker skulls well, well, I don't right? think they go, like, slow out of a bow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe they have, maybe they one of those slow bows. Maybe they have the suction so cups at the end. Sure. They're yeah. not, they're not, this is a very nice story. like Steve story. Martin. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of those lobbed oh, arrow man. shots. It, you know, it's underhanded the arrow. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> yeah, sure. His son's carrot top looking through a giant bag for the yeah, right, right rifle. Right. It's soft pitch arrow fights. It's a fart gun <laughs> rifle. Luke was a quiet guy who never sought this a quarrel. This is very confusing to me every time you say Luke. Is short? Can I change this to short yeah. every time that yeah. I wrote Luke in this thing? Yeah. Probably no, not. I, hey, can no, I just say ask Luke. You? I'm yeah. just saying. Are there any other characters it's in the story shortcoming. called Luke as well? Because that They're is what will drive all of us. Luke. <laughs> yeah. Now, the Lukes moved in next door to Luke and his family. Yeah. The thing about the Lukes is they're when in he... Luke and Bach, Texas. And okay. oh. while, while Luke was quiet and didn't really seek a quarrel, he never let anyone tread on his shoes. When he was 13, he became the regular target of bullying at school. Even in the 1800s, they had bullies. It's just crazy, right? It's just never. Is it ever going to end? So he stood up for himself by bringing a knife and carving up the bully's face. Oh, my oh. goodness. Well, that'll, that'll put an end to it, I guess. It's like a... Jeez. <laughs> carving into bully's faces? Oh, my God. That, that is, seems uh, unhealthy. That's, yeah. Like your, Why? What's the problem? Your 13-year-old Clint Eastwood son, like, uh, maybe don't carve it into their faces. You, you know? couldn't have taught your son a jab yeah. or anything? You, Why don't sure. you just yeah. swing the gun around like your dad did? Don't you, actually hit anyone. You, you just kind of swing him? it aft and forward, you know. The school was, surprisingly, unhappy with Luke's conflict management skills, and he was expelled. Okay. Unable to find another willing school, <laughs> Luke's education ended before he was even able to legibly write his own name. He could carve it, though, right? Into the forehead sure, of a bully? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Ill. <laughs> it was illegible, but still quite beautiful. It definitely was ill. Luke's classroom became the ranch, where Son. he learned the skills of a cowboy. At 15, he got a job punching cattle for $30 a week. Now, what does so, that mean? It's in his skill set, at least. it really puts a funny picture together. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be over here punching the cows. All right. <laughs> hey, can I kick the horses? No, you're not even <laughs> certified to punch the cows. Now you want to kick the horses? I want to body slam some goats, personally. Oh, there's an industry for that. Yeah. What about that one? Is, that's a niche, but if there's there is goat yoga. That's I'm right. sure there's goat wrestling. If you come over here, you can pinch a chicken. That's right. Sure, yes. You ever bitch slap the spider? It is tough. Wow. Uh, that was a bunch of them. Yep. Yeah. I'm proud of us. Thank you. That's right. Uh, you're welcome. You just, you, you, I'm, I'm a peaceful man. I just kiss beluga whales, but there's no money in it. Sure. He spent the next six years on the Longhorn Trails between Texas and Kansas, where he faced stampedes, horse thieves, and attacks from bands of native warriors. And you never explained Puberty's what punching tough. cattle is. Is it, is it, is it, is it moving, marking them? Just moving them around, basically. Oh, like punching them means to like be like, over here. Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Like real cowboys. That's stuff. how you get into go plays. You, 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 you physically hit them in the face. That's so rude. Yeah, that's that nice quite right. rude. Yeah, a nice right. Like a cow who's like can't even lift up his hands to fight back. Yeah, it's, yeah. come on, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll just ask me. <laughs> I'll go. You know, you can move more flies with asking than punchings. Sure. You know, you've already killed three of my brothers. You could at least you could do is just be nice about the whole moving me around thing. Mm -hmm. God, can By you imagine eventually being delicious? I mean, I'm sure. I we think all we are. actually are. Like, there's a lot oh, of brisket okay. on all of us at this table. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, okay. for sure. That's right. Ribs. You smoke any of these ribs? It's Dude, you're tasty. the. Do you know that you're the long pig? Okay, oh, don't wow. scare him. All right. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know, that's what oh, you are. Man. 
Yeah. You wow, just, this got real real quick. You just found that out so fast. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the valley, it's bro. Like a super <laughs> Jewy cannibal serial killer. Like, I'm going to kill you in my kibbutz outside. <laughs> well, it's almost it's almost too cool, so I have to eat uh, you out here. That's right. You said eat you out. <laughs> I'm so horny. Go on. By 1875, he Clip had... Owner. <laughs> I've never been more flaccid. He had enough, and it was time for a new profession. So Luke decided to take up hunting buffalo. Buffalo hides were in high demand back east, where they were used for coats and lab and uh, and lap robes for sleighs and carriages. Oh, okay. So it's a gi- it's it's a giant pelt. Yeah. It's bigger than a cow's by like probably two times, which is already huge, right? You don't really use cow pelts. They're not very stylish. But buffalo, bro. Yeah. I'm a leather. Yeah, but you know, yeah. <laughs> Slayton's big stupidest <laughs> statement ever. No one really uses cow skin for not anything. Not cow pelts for this kind of thing. Not for not for lap lap robes. Lap robes. You don't even know what that is. It's a robe for your lap. My fat aunt got the lap robe, and she's still <laughs> kind of fat. She gained it back. <laughs> Tanneries oh. paid as much as three dollars per hide and twenty five cents for each tongue. Which nowadays is like eighty five dollars a tongue. Uh, it's like five bucks a tongue, I think. I was close. But sixty eight bucks for uh, a hide. Not really? Sixty nine bucks. I think that's right. Failed me. Four twenty three eleven. I didn't. I didn't double check these figures today. <laughs> Whoa, amber is the color of your cow. Ha, ha, a seasoned ha. hunter could kill two hundred fifty buffalo a day. And that's why we're pieces of shit, and they're all going extinct. While yeah. the money was better, buffalo <laughs> hunting was hot, dangerous, stinky work that still involved fighting engines. So Luke decided <laughs> it was again time to change professions. My term, their term, not mine. Lay off the buffalo. That'd be great if it was like. No, I will my, save them. <laughs> my term, not theirs. I'm the one who degrades them. The cowboys were nice about it. No, no. I mean, you can't <laughs> yeah. like not quote because you're afraid that some hysterical liberal is going to get you sued for quoting something from the old days, he right? He became a dispatch courier. Engine, and engine civilian. number nine. <laughs> is that a fire uh, engine reference or a Native American reference? Uh, it's from a song. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. He became a dispatch courier and civilian scout for the U.S. Army. On a routine scouting expedition, he was once again ambushed by a band of 15 natives with rifles. What year was this? Uh, this would be the mid 1870s. Yeah, around 1875. Oh yeah. Post-war. Okay. Oh yeah. This yeah. is after the Civil War. Mm-hmm. We were still just being total douchebags to the the Native Americans As because we to were now. so nice before and after. I mean, yeah. there were plenty of people <laughs> being nice, but there was also just some policies that you're just like, oh god, what blood we have on our hands. Uh, I mean, you could use a regular voice and say the same thing, and, okay. it, would, okay. like you okay. Can't, okay. and it would be just oh as true. Oh, God, what blood we have on our hands. I guess Ray Romano yeah. <laughs> oh, feels okay. guilty about Deborah, it. Deborah, the blood on my hands. I don't know how Ray. Out, oh, damn spot. Raymond, <laughs> there's so much blood on my hands. <laughs> Raymond, I made your favorite food. It's lasagna, but it has blood from my hands on it. They opened fire and missed. So and then what would the twins say? Luke pulled his pistol oh and killed three men with three shots before turning tail and running. Oh, fuck. He's murdered now? Has he, he hasn't killed anyone yet. This is his I first mean, killing. They I'm, shot first. Yeah, no, but killing is killing. So, I'm not but, saying no, that you're, not murder. you got to defend killing, yourself. Not murder. killing, not murder, bro. Okay, sorry. It just depends, you know, how much this mushrooms are on. the first we're hearing about it, but he was in skirmishes with the, oh, with the natives for a while. For a long seems. time. Yeah, he couldn't get uh, away from them. Yeah, it seems he's to be kind of an issue. attracting trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a trouble guy, but it's Texas in the 1870s. Like, you're going to just get into trouble because there's guns around and, like, it's hot outside, right? Were there buffalo in Texas? That's far south. They were all over America until we made them almost extinct. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Have you ever heard the story? We're t- I mean, everyone knows the story that Slayton's telling right now. Have you ever seen Dances with Wolves? I think it's in there. Oh, my God, Did yeah. That? It's yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. favorites. Dope. Oh. The remaining 12 gave chase, but they could not catch Luke Short, who shot and killed two more before reaching safety. There simply had to be an easier way to make money. So in 1876, <laughs> Luke settled on a new, safer <laughs> Please, career. Please, tell us. Selling bootleg whiskey. Okay. Of course, he had a particular client in mind, Native Americans. Oh, God. This was a great call because not only did he have the contacts, the contacts, but it came with the convenient bonus that the local Sioux tribe had no idea what anything cost in American cities. Oh, so he was time able to, to <laughs> exploit some people. <laughs> what a schmuck! Yeah, I don't know if schmuck's the right word. This is douchier than schmucky. Yeah, he's a schmucky bad person. What a putz, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a real yeah. goner. I don't think he's accidentally fallen into <laughs> ripping guts, people yeah. off and exploiting them. So he was able to trade one gallon, a one-gallon bottle of whiskey, which cost about 90 cents, for $10 worth of buffalo robes. Oh, douchebag. Wow. What's course, the equivalent of that today? What are people doing right now? What, a douchebag? Well, oh. But I mean, you know, the ways that we rip people off. Sure. Um, it's like where you trade one Razor phone mm-hmm. for like an, mm-hmm. I, like a, an iPhone 10. That's a really interesting example. I'm just trying to figure out what is like a 10 to 1 cost ratio. I know. It's like what's today's equivalent to like, you know, like... I traded uh, a bucket of 
Stuff. Stuff, yeah. Stuff. For, good. I've for always a heard bucket the, of a 10 much, stuffs. A much less valuable bucket of, <laughs> for ten, of, of for stuff. 10 stuffs. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You guys see we're getting it. Crime class is going real well. We're all learning. <laughs> I love how none of us could come <laughs> up with a metaphor that was. I really thought as an improv game, like I could pass that off real quick. Like, and fellas, what would that be? And you guys would be on it real quick. And then everyone's just like, no. I. Yeah. We thought really you had sure. it. We really yeah, thought you had it. I saw the look in your eyes like, oh, Shevsky's going to step on my line with his idea. But I was just like, no, no, I'm, I'm patiently <laughs> waiting for you to impress me with your improving. Yes. Of course, he also already had one. context in the <laughs> buffalo robe business. That's like one riff traded for ten riffs of way less value. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if we traded five improv uh, friends in our improv group for one that just didn't know what he was doing. Yes. <laughs> of course, he already had context. Four Native American improvers. <laughs> they really got fucked in that one. In but the they're drunk at least. Buffalo robe business. But now he, had, he got to avoid the hard, smelly work of hunting and processing. It was a win-win business plan for him. He even yeah. launched his own brand by slapping the label for Pine Top Whiskey on booze purchased from someone else and set up shop just across the <laughs> so border from the reservation. buying whiskey from someone and then putting a different logo on it and yeah. raising the price 20 cents per, per bottle? I or mean, more maybe, yeah, right? Way, yeah, definitely. Right? He's already definitely a schemer. He'd probably lie and be like, this is aged uh, 80 years. That's right. So this one's worth 80 bucks. And he set up shop just across the border from the reservation. So he's like, hey, you guys leaving? Do you want to? Is this guy like single-handedly responsible for fucking over all of the Native Americans and getting them into alcohol? I don't think you can put that great accomplishment on just one man's shoulders. Oh, no, he, he was a Hitler? How about the, Stalin? He was part of the problem. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Hashtags, right? A lot of it hashtags. It didn't take long for the chiefs of the Sioux tribe to take exception with their new neighbor. Each drink of Pine Top contained at least two fights. A few more led to two to, led to Sioux, young Sioux men drunkenly carousing outside the reservation and getting in trouble. Ah. Uh. Two men, like, kissing on each other? No, yeah. drunkenly carousing. Yeah. Doesn't that mean to get into fights? Or it means kiss, kissing each other? I mean, whichever one, whatever kind of crossing Honestly, you're into. I, yeah, I think that, yeah. Well, you're a UFC guy, Slay, right? It's, so it's kind of a combo of both, right? A fight, <laughs> and then we kiss, and then it's aggressive gay sex, but it's actually a fight, and it, what is it? They it's are, yeah, they are right in, muscles. right in there on each other. Yeah, it's a lot of taint smell in either way, right? Mm -hmm. By getting in trouble, I mean that they got shot, sometimes by Luke himself, as they tried to steal more of his evil drink. Mm. So he would punish them on stuff that he got him hammered on, and then yeah. they would do illegal stuff. And they'd go, Open it again tomorrow, 8 a.m. Come on by, folks. It didn't take long for the federal agent in charge of Sioux relations to take notice. Realizing that Luke's presence would only lead to more agitation, he filed an official complaint. Soon after, Luke answered his door to find agents of the U.S. Cavalry, who informed him that by order of the U.S. government, he was under arrest. Nice. When he asked why, they informed him he had been unlawfully trading whiskey with natives. Little old me? <laughs> what did I do? Just Actually, like the worst I, thing all the time? Has, as he has blood dripping from his hands. <laughs> really not far off. Uh, he replied, is that all, gentlemen? <laughs> oh, wow. So, good riff into reality, guys. Yeah. Oh, riffing into reality. He replied A before, new spinoff podcast coming this fall to the Crime Network. Go on, restore He time. then invited them to join him for a bite and a drink. Ooh, I, I, I kind of like this guy. Yeah, he's, he's a swarthy gentleman. Yeah, what kind of I hamburgers are you going to do? I hope he's not going to do something bad to these people. <laughs> no, he's going out for food with them. You ever do things bad to people when you go out and get some lunch? Oh, well, especially when you invite them into your own. That, no, yeah. Funny. The officers declined and told him to gather his things. Oh. You guys I don't like chalupas, though? <laughs> I got some pizza rolls I can heat up. <laughs> pizza Tocinos? rolls? 1870s pizza yeah. rolls? That's right. They've been sitting on this ice block that I had imported. I have nothing to ca that I care to take along, Luke replied. Luke replied. Luke Wait, what happened? replied, accepting the, uh, what I have on, a pair of Colt pistols and a belt of cartridges. The officers took his weapons and inquired as to the whereabouts of his partners, but according to Luke, he ran the ranch all by himself. Which was a total, oh, total lie. lie. Total lie. Nice. Well, at, he didn't snitch, but he's still a bad guy. At that very moment, his partner was in nearby Sydney, Nebraska, procuring more whiskey to label Pine Top. Just two shady, piece-of-shit businessmen from the old days. God, yeah. I love doing this podcast and learning about the human race. <laughs> but Luke was so easygoing, the agents simply took him at his word. They destroyed his stock and escorted him to the closest train station in Sydney. As a small town of a thousand... The sight of a cavalry lined up at the railroad station drew onlookers, including Luke's anonymous business partner. Oh, yeah. So he, saw, he sees him and he's like, yeah, I get it. I'm not, I can uh, Ooh, figure boy. out what to do from here. I think I can read the, read the winds <laughs> as yeah, they shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen it in modern movies, Ooh, right? Tough room. <laughs> Luke spied him in the crowd and having developed a series of codes and signals, sent him a message. He adjusted his clothes and said, 23 skidoo. <laughs> really? Well, everyone else found That was what he said, 23 skidoo? Yep. Is that where... I love I love so many words. Skidoo? Skidoo. That's an old saying. Did it originate there? I guess so. Wow. 
Yeah, this is this is actually this story will tie into some things. That's his like in the ghetto when they released the bird. Like five O's here. Yeah, uh, clean out your shit because uh, <laughs> they're looking everywhere. Right? That's like his way. 23 is going to do. Yeah, and like, that, that was uh, his mm. secret signal to his partner that he was in trouble. Yeah. Call, which he couldn't tell call. by him being arrested. <laughs> yeah. Call. Uh, there's some weird crow call, call, making call, some call, no. Call. Uh, call. I think the Fruit yeah. Loops uh, parents in the neighborhood. This is fucking that? guy doesn't know that. Call. Hey, what's the pro- Hey, what's going on, man? What's the problem? No, no call. Me and call. You guys should I'm get a password. You, the cops are a pro- like, oh, I, you're being arrested, man. That sucks. No, call, no, no. call, 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 call. You guys aren't. You want me to break other. you out of the jail? Well, okay, sure, yeah, actually. <laughs> you guys should do it. Me and my partner, we have like a password. It makes it so much easier. It's a one eight seven Spadoinkle. Mine's one eight seven seven Cars for Kids. K A R S Cars for Kids. Oh, nice. Was that a free fucking plug for someone we don't even know? Well, everyone Probably. apparently thought it was just a merely Giving a whimsical kids cars. saying. That sounds fucking dangerous, by the way. Yeah, I was always against it. A bunch it. of poor seven-year-olds driving was, around old Honda Civics. cars with a K, and so it promoted underage driving and oh, illiteracy. One, eight, Jesus. seven, seven, cars for kids. Oh, that's probably one of those places where you donate your car, and it's like yeah. a tax donate right off, your and they sell car it. today. No, it's oh. so the kids can get around and have a good old time. That's what you know? I meant. I, I, imagine, to... I imagine like inner city, like seven-year-olds, like on phone books, like driving around old Cadillacs. Sure. Should be How else do cars go to, kids go to the drive-in? If they, uh, if they don't have a car for themselves, so they can mm-hmm. neck while they watch a movie. You're sure. going to make a great politician one day, Slayton. I hope so. While everyone else found it nearly whimsical, uh, Luke's partner read the, read the incognito signal <laughs> yeah. that they needed to get the hell out of town. Yeah. He boarded the train and somehow helped Luke Short escape, in no small part due to the fact that the agents neglected to shackle their prisoner due to his friendly demeanor. Oh, they always do those silly things like, oh, well, hell, you know, why don't you go to the buffet cart by yourself? Hey, man, you seem pretty white. Why not just, like, yeah, relax exactly. for a little it's while? Like, oh, you're not a threat. You're one of us. But, you know, just, hey, just be cool, man. Just be cool. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uncuff you, but you got to make me a pinky swear now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, the historical record doesn't exactly have how the escape went down. Oh, that, is, that isn't written down anywhere. You could have made it up, and me and the audience wouldn't have known. But, Probably. But you didn't. I would And I appreciate that. The pair drove a mule-driven, canvas-covered wagon to the mining town of Denver, Colorado, where they sold all their leftover pine top for a decent price. Sure. They split the profits and went their separate ways. Soon after, Luke found himself in the silver town of Leadville. Has he carved any more <laughs> on his face recently? Or he's no, he's been pretty cool on the face carving urge. as far as yeah. we know. That yeah. was his teenage self. He's matured since then. Yeah, he was just trying to express himself and find out who he was. He was tough. I get it. Now really? he's an adult that uses business to exploit and punish people. Sure. Leadville was a bit of a culture shock for Luke as the silver had created a new class of rich people. They had manners, tastes, and dressed well. They even took the occasional bath. <laughs> Slate. Slam. You what spin a slam. A yarn, Slayton. <laughs> and take that, you the occasional unwashed bath. masses. You know who else takes an occasional bath? Probably no one at this table, though. Right? No, showers all the time, bro. That's right. No, I yeah. don't like baths are very I take horse time. baths. I use Windex on a paper towel, just get my armpits in my crotch. <laughs> Rather than associate with such, with such strange the, what, people, wipes. Luke preferred the mining camps outside of town where he hung out at the Honka Tonks. Is that where the song comes from? No. Yeah, the Badonka Donk Honka Tonks. Luke's t- a ho- Honky tonk criminal. Oh, I thought you were talking about it's a honky tonk, but donka donk, which is the worst country song written in the last yeah, that, ever. That's, that's the kind of country. Song. That's yes. the kind of country that She's I resent. She's got a honky tonk. That's almost as offensive donk. as what <laughs> Luke Short is doing in yeah. this thing. Yeah. No, I'd oh, say yeah. it's worse. Like, if I could, if I could kill one of the two people, it'd be the guy who wrote honky tonk. It's funny how donk. white people appropriated their own music and made it worse. <laughs> you notice that? I was like, the country has just gotten worse by their own hand. If you're the like, honky tonks were a place yeah, where you could find al- cheap left liquor. alone. It just <laughs> withers and dies. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Old country is healthy and alive. <gasps> I won't see it any other way. The hon- Hashtag Turtle Simpson. How you all doing tonight? Okay, the Honka Tonks were a place you could get cheap liquor, body entertainment, and affordable overnight company. We'd like to go there with crime and do a live show. So if anyone knows if that place is still up, <laughs> I need some body entertainment. Yeah, Denver's like the Amsterdam of... Is it really? Yeah, they, they legalize weed. Yep. And now they have all the red light district, too. Mm-hmm. They do? Sure. What Probably. are we doing in L.A.? This Almost place assuredly. sucks. Also, there's an Anne Frank house there, too. It's really weird. Are you serious? No, shut the fuck up. And they have a <laughs> oh New York, New York, Paris casino. I can't believe you got me for the Anne Frank house. That's the most obvious one. I was like, why would they? That's pretty cool, though. And then, you asshole. I miss doing why this. Why would Denver have an Anne Frank? I was like, God, they're so progressive there. They even just remind us of fascism. Like, yeah. Okay, go on. Most importantly, the Honka Tonks were also a great place to gamble. 
Luke's M game money, of right? choice. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Luke's game of choice was Pharaoh, which dominated card tables in the West before the rise of poker. Pharaoh Fawcett. Got a it. Card Nailed game it. I thought similar. it was a game where you just boss people around. Make the pyramids, bro. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Get back to work, slave. We are playing Pharaoh, and I am the king. Uh, let my people go. That's right. And who's my people? Oh, yes. Yeah, all those Glendale pyramids that we're all so familiar with. The Glendale's Armenian. That's not Egyptian. That'd be yeah. funny if there's a huge Egyptian population in Glendale, and they hated the Armenians, and they all fought each other. That would be really funny. Wouldn't it be funny? So It'd be like funny. Yeah, magic carpets in the streets versus Mercedes AMGs with tinted windows. I don't know if that's true. I don't know A either. card game similar to modern day craps or roulette, Pharaoh was popular because it allowed for a nearly unlimited number of players on the same table, and it gave the house a razor thin edge. It was common for a dealer to break his bank covering winnings. There's even a table that today sits in a Vegas museum that is known as the suicide table. Because three of its previous owners killed themselves after going bust. Three of them. Mm -hmm. I always find it interesting when like super rich people kill themselves. We're like, you know, it's not that crazy being poor. Like you can still get street tacos <laughs> and you can still masturbate somewhere. Like it's not that bad, right? <laughs> get a gym membership, right? Go, you can still work out and take sure, a shower, right? Like, yeah. But they're like, I'm throwing myself off the fucking building because the stock market crashed. Like, well, dude, if you would have voted for universal health care, you wouldn't really have that much to lose, right? Because of the odds, <laughs> okay. the house often yeah. cheats. Yes. Okay. So because the odds were not so much in the house's favor, the house often cheated, rigging the decks for better odds. Okay. The, the problem grew so big that many players would insist on having the deck nailed to the table, so each card could only be removed by ripping it from the stack. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. So they had to buy a new stack every game? Yes. Needless to say, uh, you really cannot find a, a Pharaoh game anywhere today. Yeah, yeah that doesn't like seem really like a good game at all. It's super impractical. They could have played Uno or what's that other one with the cards? War. War. Yeah. Well, there's actually, so the house would cheat by trying to stack the deck or rig it or do different things like that. Players would often cheat by, atta um, by attaching a thin line, like a horsehair, to a chip. And if the dealer wasn't looking and they saw their bet was wrong, they would just pull, like, jerk their chip back. <laughs> With a horsehair. That's yeah. hilarious, dude. Nowadays, horsehairs are very valuable. They're used for violins. The cheating, of course, often led to arguments. In 1879. They are, but they're used for violins. Luke entered into a disagreement with a drunken gambler. Gambler. Gambler? A gambler. Why are you messing with me? I am just a drunken gambler. A gambler. <laughs> Go a, pick on somebody else. <laughs> who had a reputation as a gunslinger. Ooh. The dealer, knowing the man's reputation, offered to cover any chips of Luke's that the man took. Luke refused, and the gunslinger reached for his pistol. Perfect. But before he could get out of his holster... Luke put his own revolver against the man's face and pulled the trigger. Make a fucking move. Whoa. Wow. He didn't, like, threaten him. He just pulled his trigger. Well, putting a nice-sized hole in the man's cheek. Not oh. a, not a mean-sized hole. Holy Deadwood violent scene, Batman. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's uh, pretty immediate. Yeah. But there was Looks no like arrest or trial. Looks like we This one's got a little ketchup splatter. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we nail this one down just so it's a... Uh, a little easier to handle. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, for a guy, yeah. Oh. That must have changed the mood in the room. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm fairly sure Maybe. the game continued. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, that, that is the old Texas yeah, way, right? I guess right? so, yeah. That uh, seems uh, yeah. rude. Well, yeah. there was no but, arrest uh, and no trial. Hey, can I have his <laughs> chair? It's got better back support. No arrest and no trial. I guess because he was reaching already. The man also survived because it just went through his cheek. <laughs> Oh. He Wait, so like, he continued to play, too? He's like, ow. Okay, ah, uh, sorry, and, man. Yeah, Jeez. Right, and going to the dentist in the 1870s oh must have been a thrill, too. That's what killed him was a dentist. Everything yeah. sucked in the 1870s. Those barbarians. There was no air conditioning, right? Nothing was good then. Ugh, they shit in buckets, threw it out on the street. Oh, yeah. good Lord. That sounds, like fun you guys for like, do that now? sounds fun for like a weekend. No, just I did around. notice your cul-de-sac was a little uh, yeah. stinky. but it, Well, it's the valley, though. It's just, the air particles yes. shit, or shit particles are just in the air. 818 till I move. That's right. The encounter made 25-year-old Luke... <laughs> I want that tattooed across my chest. And I don't even live here. ...a popular man about town. Gambling houses hired him as security, and pretty soon Luke was dealing Pharaoh himself. Oh, wow. So that, that little thing that he did actually like made him look cool. So, say, that guy shows some spunk murdering yeah. the guy. like Or not murder, but shooting the guy in the yeah. head. He just pierced him very large. He just helped him get like a nice 18 gauge. Nice. But I mean, like, just the sound of a gun going off that close to your ears, though, the guy was probably going to go deaf, too. Yeah, sure. But I guess as like if you were managing Whatever, the what's... floor, you'd be like, he's got gusto, that kid. I'd like to have him working for me. What moxie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what's worth right? hearing in 1879 anyway? Right? There's no, like, The buffalo employee... stampeding behind you. Fair enough. Yeah. That's a good point. And yeah, the Comanche. Danger. The Comanche. <laughs> 
Uh, where the shit was I? Before long, Luke was one of the rich people of Leadville. He Ooh. wore clean, tailor-made clothes. Yeah, them Dockers, Led- boy. Is Leadville the, the, it's the fancy part of Denver? Mm, no, it's, no, a, it's, it's a different Denver. town. Oh, okay. It, it's yes. a silver town where they made uh, it, right, ironically. Right, right, right. But right. Silvertown is not famous for lead. I don't know if Oddly you guys knew enough. that. Neither did I, though. Uh, he up. wore a clean tether made clothes, complete with a top hat, diamond tie pin, and gold headed walking stick. Hi, I'm Willy Wonka with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. He even bathed every day. Oh my God. Oh, Whoa. God. Well, he's, he's changed. Geez, Gotta like, get a little money in this yeah, guy. Take a whip of this guy's too, rich balls. Dude thinks he's too good. He also <laughs> shot people when necessary, earning a reputation as a dandy gunfighter. Oh, I fucking a, hate this guy. A, a real fop. These gun guys, fight, yes. Like a dandy gun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a posh murderer. So he was bullied when he was a little kid, and now he's pretty much a bully, right? Yes. I mean, it depends on how you view things. Well, I view he things so with logic far, and reason, he so, so now far he's a bully. Not shoot shot, he has so far not shot, he's anybody, not shoot shot anybody who didn't draw on him first. Let's that be fair. we know of. But he's like, we know he could of. have, had a, also he could have like been satisfying his urges with like bodies. Very good point. Like, yeah, it's the, you know. It's was it Charles Bronson that used to do the pick up the gun? Or was that, uh, was that. Uh, make My Day? Yeah, was it Make My Day? I believe uh, Clint. Oh, no, Clint Easton would say pick up the gun. Oh, he was, he was Dirty huh? Harold. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. Was Dirty Harold. <laughs> Make my day? Dirty Harold's what we call my rabbi that got arrested for molestation. No, no, Dirty Harry is a cowboy character. No, he's not. He's a cop. He's a cop. He's a cop. In he's a cop. SF. But cops, cops can be cowboy characters. Around Especially this time, SF. he also I think so. earned yeah. the nickname. Francisco, you all wear cowboy hats when you're fucking around with that shit, right? Go on. Tender around rides. this time, he also earned the nickname sure. The Undertaker's Friend because he typically shot his opponents in places that allowed for an open casket. Oh, oh that's... Okay. I don't know how to feel about this guy. <laughs> like, I really am on the fence. I do. He's a dick. He's yeah, well, the, yeah. He might have yeah, some rules that he goes by, but I still don't think he, he fits in the, the paradigm of uh, decency. So far, he's if not I'm, like a Robin Hood. No, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. He's so not far, if I'm Robin. ranking this guy, though, amongst all of our people we've had, like, I don't put him near the top of our assholes. Like I don't want to put anything near the top of my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> am just, I right, folks? Just the middle. Just the middle. Yeah. Just the Around pinky. This just time, the pinky. Luke's reputation helped him make some Try famous it. friends. You will come so hard. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. But seriously, try it. Luke's Hashtag sorry, Mom. Hashtag sorry, Mom. There we go. Luke's reputation helped him make some famous friends. Bat Masterson, Doc I Holliday. I thought you were going to say Batman. I was like, whoa! <laughs> this guy got to meet Batman? Wow. dun 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 Yeah. <laughs> Gotham by Gaslight? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, interesting. Famous yeah, friends, Bat Masterson, Doc Holliday, and Wyatt Earp. Do you think wow. anyone called Bat Masterson Butt Masterson like he was into butts? Yeah, probably. Oh, God. He would have shot him with a gun so quickly. Well, you know. I know who Doc Holliday the is. The Devil's Playground? Doc Holliday's from uh, the Tombstone movie. Yeah. Yeah, also history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's no, also... No, the history's written off yes. the movie, Slayton. Get a fucking so, grip on reality. Make Doc my Holliday. day, goth. What, what, you mean Val Kilmer? What god or whatever demon runs the realm we're in does is they watch the movies of nowadays, and they go back in time, and then they make history. I'm your Huckleberry. That's right. In June of, ni- of 1880, Wyatt wanted to start a stagecoach business, business in Tombstone, <laughs> Arizona. He telegraphed Luke and offered him a job as a pharaoh dealer slash gunslinger. Things went fine for about eight months until February 25th, 1881. Valentine's but it's President's Day. Day. <laughs> more Valentine's Day. <laughs> I was making it, but you, you made it. I, I, I think yours was more accurate, but it was funnier. February is a good one. Yeah. When a New it was Yorker, MLK it's Day. Black, it's Black History Month. <laughs> Black History Month. Eventually. Did they have that at that time? No, 1881, probably. Like, We're still slaving them. I can't do the month yet. Well, Slavery's over because this is post-World War II. Uh, uh, Civil they had indentured but... servants then for a while. Fair right? enough. And then was, nowadays, there, people, was, people there was a lot going on. There were, it, was, there it was, wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. No. But, yeah. No, there, he, the war was over, but, you yeah. know, who knows? By but now time. it's great for black people. There's yeah. no it problems is at terrific. all. Unless whatsoever. they have corporate like cubicle jobs, then they're also still slaves. You're like, oh man, I'm still a slave. Fuck, I have a cubicle. Yes, nothing. I've heard oh. that's the biggest problem, right? Yeah, they're sure. It's like Jesus Christ, I'm stuck here. I can't make enough to get out, but I'm stuck in. I'm just Everything like, was fine for eight months until February 25th, 1881, when a New Yorker turned 49er entered the Oriental Saloon. That was a big sentence there, little boy. Yeah, uh, Charlie drank like a fish and quickly lost a ton of money at the faro table. Where Luke happened to be dealing. Bro. Do, do fish actually, like, I've always, fish don't drink, though, do they? They just breathe it. I mean, they have to also absorb some of it in order to be hydrated. I think it just, like, flows through them. They're not like, I'm going to go have a drink. They're not like, they're they're not like I'm thirsty. They're just breathing. You're I never thought. thirsty if you're a fish, right? He oh, breathed. I've met some thirsty ass <laughs> fish, dude. <laughs> oh, she thirsty. They, they want this. She you know? thirsty. Look at them gills. They're all swollen. That fish got a honky tonk, but donk a donk. You nope. see what I'm saying? That's gross, Come on, dude. Man. Fish oh, ass oh, is like a. That doesn't sound good. Charlie. Although it's already slimy. <laughs> I'm just saying. So Charlie got really drunk is and quickly lost. Is slimy good a... for you? I mean, if you're looking to hook up with a thirsty ass fish, you might want to just know that you don't have to bring your Astroglide. 
Charlie got very drunk and quickly lost a ton of money at the faro table where Luke happened to be dealing. Charlie ran his mouth until both men reached for their guns. Nice. We know how this goes. Kind of like a Reservoir Dogs thing, but like without the jumpsuits. But Bat Masterson, who knew both men, was able to talk them down. Now, fellas, put your weapons down. No That's a reason. Very classic scene. I do want to shoot this man, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be really fun. I would enjoy it immensely I, if I shot this man. I'm going to death. shoot him first. Yeah, please. <laughs> you can't stop me. <laughs> Listen up. Just cu- put the. You know how expensive bullets are. Not, oh, yes. I mean, not expensive enough. Because no. this, this guy is right here. And I mean, this gun is. Oh, boy, it feels fun. You know? I think bullets should be like $10,000. And I thought of that. Definitely. On <laughs> crime this week, we've got a very <laughs> funny man, Curtis Rock, ladies and germs. Curtis but not Rock. for long. Later that afternoon, Charlie interrupted Bat and Luke during a conversation on the boardwalk. By, but not. By grabbing Luke's arm and reaching for his gun. I thought you were going to say giving him an Indian burn and be like, that term hasn't even been invented yet. You guys are brilliant. <laughs> but the drunk was too slow for Luke, who pulled out his forty-five and shot Charlie right through the heart. Did he survive as well? <laughs> Charlie fell to the ground as the muzzle flash from Luke's gun set his shirt on fire. Oh, fee. Who's, See, I told you shit gun? happens when you shoot up close. Whose shirt? So Charlie tried to. Uh, Charlie grabbed Luke and tried to shoot him. Is Luke's shirt on fire? No, Luke no. shot Charlie point blank. So Charlie goes, Charlie's shirt is on fire. Yeah, Char- okay, just, okay. just like the rest a, of the story, Luke's getting away with murder. And basically. there's a bullet yes. in his heart. Little, the yeah, other little, guy yeah. tried to shoot him first. I will. I will defend him. The other guy pulled a gun and he was like, "No, bah." Okay, Slayton. Yeah. But this is a crime show, so I, I have a feeling that the essence of what this guy does is he's, he's an instigator and an exploiter. I mean, remember what he did with his whiskey? I mean, he's not the greatest guy he's in the universe. He's not a Boy Scout coach or whatever. He's Charlie fell to the ground as the muzzle Scout flash coach, set right? uh, Luke's gun set his shirt on fire. As the man's chest burned, Luke <laughs> shot him in the head. My chest, it's burning. Well, this will stop it. Vapor yeah. No, no, no. I got, I got the cure. Don't worry <laughs> there, Charles. Oh, like yeah. that, that dad cure for you're like, my arm hurts. He's like, well, I can make you stop thinking about your arm. He step on his toe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As the uh, let's see, he turned Charlie. Tur- uh, Luke turned to Bat and said, "You sure as hell pick some of the damnedest people for friends." <laughs> After he got shot in the head? No, Luke did did that. Oh, Sorry, okay. not Charlie. Jeez, okay. Because <laughs> all these people are getting shot in the head and just like walking but around yeah, still. Because they got, just made them tougher. That's when men were men, right? You got to retain your wit. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> then were, Luke yeah. went back inside and continued to deal Pharaoh. Uh, this is the most unfazed part of history. But it's also a very good example of just being a successful businessman, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Just keep your focus. Don't worry about your morals and people dying. Just this time, get back though, to work, right? He it's was arrested. Look at the graphs is what I'm always saying in the meetings. And found not guilty for self-defense. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. See, this guy is, like, instigating, and he's always like, but officer, he shot first. Why do you think he instigated this again? And it's just like a... Come what, on. What, hold on. What part of the story do you think he instigated this, this Stop in? Stop it. Go on with your story. I just story. want to go back. He actually, didn't I read instigate. the whole thing. Yeah, he didn't instigate. Back again? I'm just thinking that he's... We're not Tombstone's seeing a facial expression. physician and county coroner Dr. George E. Goodfellow was only a few feet away from Charlie as he died. The doctor was surprised when not a drop of blood came from the wound through Charlie's heart. What? After performing an autopsy, he found the intact bullet with parts of Charlie's silk handkerchief wrapped around it. What does this mean? It gave him the idea. <gasps> He's going to build his first Kevlar vest, isn't he? And Dr. Fellow came up with the, Goodfellow came up with the first designs for a bullet-resistant clothing made of multiple layers of silk. Yes. Yep. Because what there it does is when you shoot the bullet, uh, it actually gets, it gets like caught up. It absorbs the energy, uh, and it twists <laughs> into the cloth. And that so cool? looks a hero. Mm-hmm. Well, he helped him invent something that saves lives. Yeah, there you go. So that's... that mm-hmm. Good okay. guy. Good guy number more, one, Luke. I, yes, is there a twist want, in this story? I want to get some, to some no, face carving. you're the twist. Okay. That's uh, the whole thing. I'm a little Understandably, bit of Charlie's friends in Tombstone were perturbed that Luke shot their body. <laughs> tail. <laughs> to avoid retaliation, Luke grabbed the next train out of town. If it weren't for Charlie, Luke Short would have been part of another major piece of history. As eight months later, Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Whoa. Holliday... The real shit. in the shootout at the OK Corral. Yeah. Wow. Instead, Luke found himself in Dodge City, Kansas, where the Great Western Cattle Trail brought Texas herds to meet the trains headed to the northern markets. Dodge City was the cow town to be. Yeah. You want to punch a cow? I got a cow for you to punch. They're everywhere. <laughs> what if I want to slap a chicken? Yeah, you get on Moo Tinder, you just find a cow to punch. Any what if I want to quarrel with a rhinoceros? <laughs> That's the different, wrong country, buddy. <laughs> I want to jack off a snake. Is that the right place? Oh, no. Plenty of that. Here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wrap his rattle around your butt. You know? Oh, well, you judge me? Okay, fine. Whatever. Newspapers across the country gave Dodge City raving reviews, <laughs> like the Yates Center News calling Dodge City, quote, 
A den of thieves and cutthroats, the whole town in league to rob the unwary strangers. I believe that's where we get the term dodgy, I believe. Very possible. Oh, shit. I believe yeah, very so, possible yeah. that that's where that British term comes from. And Absolutely. It, what about the saying, like, let's get the fuck out of Dodge? That, well, maybe I'm thinking of that. Well, we, no, I think dodgy and that. You're just like, let's get, this, it's like an advertisement, though, for a criminal. So if you're if you're someone that doesn't want to get involved in crime, you're like, let's stay the hell out of that scummy neighbor. But if you're a criminal, like, honey, we got to go here and start shooting people and robbing people. The Hayes Sentinel Parade. Getting place. some whores and gambling. Right, punch a few cows. Go on vacation, right? The Hayes Sentinel pra praised the city by saying, "Quote: The town is full of prostitutes, and every house is a brothel." You guys got any Groupons? <laughs> Local reformers. No. No, I, <laughs> we don't because it's. We, they don't would need you it, right? go to the Groupon whorehouse? Are you literally asking me on air to be very honest about the fact that I probably would if it was with a few friends? Go to the Groupon whorehouse. Yeah, we go to the Groupon. I'm not going to go to the one by myself that bring I don't get a coupon friends, for. What are you, crazy? <laughs> I like a deal. I'm just joking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bring not going five to friends, get one girl half price. I'm married. I, I don't You're believe... like, wait, that math is really off. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't believe in whorehouses. I don't even believe they exist. Local reformers tired of all <laughs> the accurate Tact. bad press. My wife's like, she goes through all the places on the globe and she just uh, colors out uh, all, all the uh, Holland. She's like, yeah, this place doesn't exist. Local reformers tired of all the accurate bad press wanted to promote a Dodge City that was a safe, moral environment in which to live and raise families. <laughs> Why? Why don't they go somewhere else? If they have all the problems, they're like, let's just leave this place to the criminals, let them have fun, sure. put a wall up around it, you sure. know, let them burn their tires and yeah. have their marches. Sounds like some and bad we'll just, hombres to yeah, me. Yeah, and we'll just start a place where we can actually just mow our lawn and, like, hang out for a bit without worrying about a fucking arrow going through something, right? Why do you want to try to fix up a <laughs> shit? You can't put lipstick on your shit city. So in 1878, the city passed laws point. against gambling and prostitution. Oh, well, that always works, right? Which did little to actually curb vice, but it did a lot for the city coffers by way of fines and taxes. Uh -huh. So all the criminals in politics were like, look at all this money we're getting from people that are just breaking the rules all the time. Boom, of course. Yeah, it's great. Never heard that story before on the show. Right? In 1880, oh God, right? Kansas became a dry state, a law that Dodge City respected so much that even the mayor, Alonzo Webster, had his own gambling house saloon known as the Alamo. Dude, they had a black mayor in the 1800s? That's awesome. Yes. Alonzo Webster. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and this is the invention also of the fist bump. On February 6th, 1883, Luke Short became a part owner of the Long Branch, which happened to be right next door to the Alamo. Is that a steakhouse, the Long Branch? I forgot. Yes, okay. yes. the Long Branch Saloon mm. is what this place is. Wow. Webster, being a moral man, the mayor. still lent his ear to the concerns of reformers to maintain a sense of decency. Did you say moral like with a quote, like he's just, as, as a politician, he's like, I gotta like make them think I give a fuck I put no stank on that whatsoever, Jonathan David Shevsky. That was totally up and up that I said that. Listeners, he's winking at me. To maintain a sense with of decency, butt. he passed a law banning music in all... <laughs> it's the best kind of winking with the all-shitting brown eye. Doink, 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 doink. It takes a little more energy, though, to pull your trousers down. That's why I like to be naked. Uh, is it bad that I'm proud of that? <laughs> no, it's actually... You're on the right really... show. You're on the right show. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're in the right spot, bro. It's a serious comedy story told Sorry, to mom. two five-year-olds. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. To maintain a sense of decency, he passed a law banning music in all gambling houses and saloons in Dodge. No, yeah. What is that? How does that maintain decency if you ban music? Well, because, I mean, dancing is for the devil, sure. obviously. you got to leave space for the People Holy Ghost. People fornicate and whatever. So that was his way of kind of appeasing, like, the squares? Yeah. Like, when I'll make dancing it is, illegal. It is a lot sadder when you're drunk in silence. <laughs> yeah. <That's, laughs> if you get drunk, you're just so like, fucking true. oh, boy, I'm really thinking about stuff oh, yeah. now. The void. The void is so dark. <laughs> sure. What is nothingness? And the oh, next. Fuck. Can't we just have a live band or something, man? When Luke was informed that he had to get rid of the music, he took it in stride as paying a band was very expensive. How expensive, Slayton? Very. But I wanted a one high, high amounts of money. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that night, Luke noticed something fishy. There was still one gambling house in Dodge playing live music. What the fuck? Don't they know the motherfucking rules? I, I think it's easy to pick out which one is playing music still, right? It's you the follow, one follow that, the sound? Yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, also, I think that Luke is kind of seeing where this is going. It was his neighbors at the Alamo. So he's going to fuck them up? He's like, I'm going to get them Realizing shut down. Realizing that the mayor was simply trying to eliminate the competition... Uh -huh. Are you following here, Shevsky? Yes. Now, uh -huh. the mayor passed a law banning music. I'm not going to edit out the airplane, unfortunately. Oh, you're not? Nah. I'm I was not trying to be professional for you. No, okay. I do appreciate it. That was no. a very, very good call of what you were doing. Let's not edit that. Let's yeah. just let's talk through it. No, no. The airplane is all about this. Yeah, really no. key people in the story of the 1800s, right? Yeah. yeah. We've gone back in time. Yep. We've gone back in time. Do, 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 do. We're do, is that do, Eddie Money do. in the news? Yeah. Well, how? Wasn't it Huey Lewis? 
Who's Eddie Money then? Wait. How many <laughs> Eddie Money on? had uh, cash on hand, I believe. But <laughs> Eddie, yes, Huey Lewis. Eddie Money was Cash Money Records, I believe. <laughs> Young Money, Cash Money. I really am I'm embarrassed. I, I, I know nothing about American pop culture. I, I now put the microphone down. Realizing that the mayor was simply trying to eliminate the competition, mm-hmm. Luke got the band back together the very next night and told them to go, quote, Grind out the melodies so dear to the heart of the Texas cowboy. Oh, wow. Well, even the criminals used to talk in a, like a flourishy kind of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So dear to the cowboy sounds and hearts. He stuck around for a few hours to see if the Webster, if Webster would make a move. When nothing happened, Luke left. Within minutes, the authorities arrived and arrested every musician in the building. Dude, how much happened? Every musician, not even the ones playing. And it's like, I've, I've tried the banjo once. I have to go to jail? Yeah, it was just like a guy in the whorehouse with, like, your SoundCloud link on a card, and they're like, you're under arrest. You're like, I was just I was just trying to promote. <laughs> my, my mom makes me practice the oboe every day. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, that's technically a band. Get over there. Hang them high, boys. And he's also very young to be in the saloon, but it's a uh, Dodge, so it's fine. When Luke found out, he rushed back with bail money for his band. He ran up into the street searching for the arresting officer, all the while music blaring from the Alamo saloon. Oh, that must have made him mad. What happened next, Richard? <laughs> he finally <laughs> spied the lawman and made a beeline towards the officer cash in hand. That's when the cop whipped out his pistol and fired point blank at Luke Short. Jesus Wait, Christ, point that's so blank. serious. I know there's so many like death penalties for stuff like that. Is that really a death penalty crime? Somehow he missed. The judge dread of the 1800s. Luke drew his gun and returned <laughs> I fire. Am the law! And because you're white, I'll let you go without handcuffs. Yes. But I am the law. I'm Judge Grant. Just Pinky Promise. That's right. Also, Rob I'm Schneider. the grocer. Rob Schneider's yeah. also here. I'm also the midwife, which is a weird job for a feller, but there's not really one out here. That's right. I got the smallest hands in town. They just make me put them where they need them. <laughs> sure. I'm also the proctologist, but that's more of a hobby than a profession. That's Call right. me tongs. <laughs> the officer, uh, so, so Luke drew, drew his gun and returned fire. The officer fled, and after a few steps, fell to the ground. Perfect. Shot him in the back, did you now? Luke, knowing he was in for trouble, went back to the Long Branch, got a shotgun, and barricaded himself inside. Oh, okay. so this is the part when you're done with the high-speed chase. You're like, well, I'm going to die now, so I guess I'll just shoot them until yeah, I die. Right. But luckily for Luke. But luckily. He had not, in fact, shot the sheriff. Oh, he had I shot the thought I shot the sheriff, but I accidentally shot the... Did he shoot someone? The man had simply tripped as he fled. Oh, then why y'all tripping? Oh, wow. Bam. When he learned of his mistake, Luke gave up his weapons and agreed to be escorted to court where he would plead guilty to creating a disturbance and pay his fine. How nice is that, though, to find out That's... like you're not a murderer when you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, I, fool, I, I boy. thought everyone was going to be super pissed. You guys need $2,500? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll sign them. Where do I sign? Oh, really? Can I put that on credit card, though? Like, I'm a little skint this month. He's fine? Is he even mad at me? <laughs> he ruined his shoes. Yeah, they are. I bent up my fucking Levi's. You know, in those days, too, they were like 300 bucks. But he never saw a courtroom. What happened? Instead, the mayor's cronies mm. held Luke in lockup until noon, when he was taken to the train station and given a choice. You get out of this town, everyone will see you again, you're dead. I mean, sort of, yeah. There were two trains leaving Dodge City, one going east, the other west. None of them are going in deeper into this town. You understand my gist? He chose yes. east. Heading to Kansas City, Missouri, he got the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Maybe. So that's where the saying came from? Very possibly. I'm not oh, entirely wow. sure. And then how was the barbecue where he went? Dry I'm belief, assuming right? that it was mediocre at best. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a passionate barbecue like elitist. So dude, I will, I will give credit where it's due, though. The blood sows you brought me was super dope. Oh, I had, some of, us, I had some of it today, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Eliza's oh, yeah. husband owns that place. Say what? Eliza's husband owns that place. Oh. He's, he's one of the. He's, wow, that's he's cool. He's one of their crew. On his arrival, Luke went to the Marble Hall Saloon to find a kindred spirit, Charles E. Bassett, the original owner of the Long Branch. He's a real hound. The two men had more in common, including friends of Wyatt Earp and you Matt Masterson. You ain't nothing about 1800s criminal. <laughs> they had more in common. Elvis, huh? No. Okay. Elephus. Than Titus. being former owners of the Long Branch, they also had friends of Wyatt Earp and Matt Masterson, as well as an axe to grind with Dodge City's corrupt mayor. So on June 9th, Luke and Charlie rode back into Dodge with a few friends for support, including Wyatt and Bat. They said, let's get the fuck fuck back into Dodge. (laughs) Huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. they upgraded it. We're coming the fuck back in now. That's right. Let's get the fuck out of the outside that's, of Dodge. That's uh, there what happens in Vegas. When you get the fuck out of Dodge, you got to come get, back. You got to go back in. <laughs> There's always someone to shoot, boys. <laughs> Anyone got the right size bullets? God damn, I've been at it, bad at this my whole life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they sat across from, from the mayor and his, and his team and hammered out a deal, allowing Luke to sell his share on the Long Branch and move on. I'll give you five snake punches, 13 cow punches. 
as it turns out, he was right on time. And ten buckets of stuff. Livestock yeah, right. on You're not Indian, are you? Because I got some whiskey that is about fifty thousand dollars a gulp. Yep. Livestock on Kansas farms was experience were experiencing a rash of splenic fever, also known as anthrax. Oh shit! And we're not talking about the metal band, folks. This is actually bad for you. To combat the spread, the state shut down the Great Western Cattle Trail in 1885 and closed down many outback steakhouses in the process. And with it went Dodge City. We got nothing. We got nothing. So I yeah. would like to see a blooming onion in those days. That right? would be interesting. Oh man, just all excited. They Do you like outback, Rich? It's a place. Okay, cool. Do you, you know? Do you like Outback? To ask an adult, like, would you prefer to go to Outback right now? Like, no, what? Like, I've never been to an Outback. I just wanted to know. You've it's, never been to one? It's like an Applebee's of a steakhouse. I've like, never. Been, I don't think I've been to an Applebee's. What? I went to an Applebee's once, and uh, once I think I've been to a Chili's. Jesus, how fancy are you? You've only been there once. Even I've been to Outback or what do you call it, Applebee's more than I can count. Well, the guy I went with uh, five, bought. Though. He just ordered the menu. <laughs> Dude, Dude, your other hand got blown touche. off. <laughs> don't say five shay. I can't the whole go cost seventeen dollars. In December of 1884, Luke bought an interest in the White Elephant Saloon in Fort Worth, Texas. It's kind of a timeshare thing. It's a new invention. I also, get it two weeks a year. I get the saloon. It's just a place where you come in and blindly exchange gifts while you get drunk. That sounds yeah. fucking fun. Sounds like a good Hanukkah party. Am I right? Jeez. Located uptown, it was, one of, right. it was one of the largest, Thank fanciest, you. and costliest establishments in the entire Southwest. But even amongst fine people, old habits die hard for Luke. While dining at the restaurant... Face carving. Come yeah. on, face carving. Yeah, they're Come like, on, face carving. Oh, you a new member here? And then he shoots him in the cheek. Uh, sorry, it's an awkward response I have. While dining at a restaurant, a, a waiter delivered a glass of milk and a small fly landed on the surface of the liquid. They used to drink milk, like, as adults at restaurants. Did you ever yeah, see there will well, be blood? All, all Can I get they, some milk with my steak? Well, like, it's, better, it's better than the water. All they honestly. had was, yeah, cow yeah. juice. Yeah. Cow juice? Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? That's, that's what I said. Yeah. You know, cow juice. You scrape yeah. it off the sweaty cows, and uh, when you get well, enough, you, you drink you, it. You squeeze it out of them, which is how you get juice out of a fruit. Oh, you're talking about milk. I thought your cow juice was a whole new invention. No. Cow juice. They should call it that. Oh or you just gosh. put an entire cow in a press and see what happens. Can I get some cow juice? Ew. Well, that's, but that's, Ew. that's like, like the like, worst burger I've ever heard Like of. the things they make avocado oil with, but like with a cow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like right. it fills up little jars of it and they sell yeah. it. You're like, yeah, this essence is, of cow. This is blood <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, dude, all the silver like hipsters are like, oh my god, it smells so good. I put Raw my, cow. I put it on my couch and on my bullhorn thing that I have hanging in my living room next to that gold weird lampshade thing that's oh, all okay. geometric. Yeah, hipsters, huh? Hipsters. Right. So, and we hate them, I guess. Yeah, so well, no, you can't hate them. If you hate hipsters, then you are a hipster. You have to just like acknowledge oh, their presence. Oh shit, son. So a fly lands on the surface of his milk. <laughs> What yeah. do you think happens he next? Shot the, he shot, he the, shot fly. the fly. Yeah, was Luke good. calmly <laughs> threw the milk in the air, pulled out his gun, and shot the fly. While it was in the air, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi style. Did, did the, I hope the bullet didn't go past the milk. and. Like it went the, through the fly's cheek, so the fly was actually still alive. <laughs> open casket. No one dies in the story. That's the thing about Luke. He's just always making sure open caskets. Except Even with natives. insects. Again, there were no charges. Luke's Exterminator Company. They'll all be able to have open caskets. Still, Luke did have some trouble from the law. While Fort Worth didn't have as corrupt a, major as Dodge, a mayor as Dodge City, there was a slight problem of the former marshal. Timothy Isaiah Courtright was born in 1848 in Sangamon County, Illinois. During the Civil War, he lied about his young age to enlist as a Union soldier. Afterwards, he traveled America, developing his own reputation as a quick draw. Ooh, we're getting to a real Johnny Cash song of a story here, aren't we now? He eventually taught his bride the craft, and the two made money holding shooting exhi exhibitions, even performing as part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Dope! So they were oh. like, they were like, like, they'd come to your town, and you're like, holy shit, watch these people do quick draws. Yeah, and then yeah. they'd like throw a penny in the air and shoot it and that kind of shit. Bad ass. Yeah, dope. This is fucking rad. This is some serious cowboy shit now. Put your hats on, boys. This is crazy. Yeah, he has really turned a corner. Well, this is a different guy. Oh, right. Remember I introduced yes. a, new, a new person? Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, this Tim. is the guy he's meeting. Yeah, this is... Okay, cool. Are you daydreaming? Tim Courtright. Focus on Slayton's eyes. Are you still here? Eyes. Sorry. I know, I know the garden is beautiful. It's been a long year to... The sunflowers today. are very difficult. Look into Slayton's eyes mm. while wow. he's reading. While he's reading. Thank you'll, you. You'll pay attention. They're fine. so blue. I know, right? I either stare at those or... Honestly, kind of gross. You just wanna, thank you. I appreciate it. Either those it. or where his nipples, when, when they're hard. You know what it is? It's the redness of the whites of my eyes that make the blue stand out even more. Wow, you just put that on your Tinder profile. Go on with your story, weirdo. The couple arrived in Fort Worth in 1876, and he was quickly elected marshal. Tim wore his two revolv revolvers. <laughs> revolvers. Revolvers. <laughs> Don't short me with your revolver, sure. Tim wore his two revolvers, showman style, with the butts facing forward, and kept his hair long, leading to his creative nickname, Long Hair Jim. Yeah. 
By the way, his name's Tim, <laughs> and they nicknamed him Long Haired Jim. That yeah. is honestly, that is creative. Yeah. That's a cool folk song. <laughs> it's a little juke. It's a little juke. A little zig when you want to zag, you know. Sure, yeah. Don't mess also, around. Also, some people call him Big Jim because they just decided Tim didn't work. <laughs> Big Jim's a cool name. But his name yeah. is. T- his name's Tim. Either way, he's like, well, you could call me Tim. And he's like, yeah, you know, never mind. I'll take Jim. Yeah, that's fine. As a criminal. Oh, is he a criminal? No, he's, no, he's, he's a, a showman. Lawman. He's a showman. He's a lawman showman. Yeah. A shalaman. Oh, he's Jewish? Yes. Tim was he's also... He's a longshoreman. Tim Jim was also a raging alcoholic who used his badge for his own convenience. Still, he reduced Fort Worth's murder rate by more than half. You gotta love that, folks. Yes. I'm voting for him again. Give me a case of whatever he's drinking. I'll send it to my sheriff, well, right? That's that's it. what I'm talking yes, about. I'll, I'll sign race. up for his Patreon. That's right, right now. Because he was such an asshole, uh, they did not vote for him again, and he lost re-election. Even though he got murders down? And became an even bigger alcoholic. Ah, oh, <laughs> poor guy. So he took a job where he could be okay, even more of a you dick. guys can have more murders. I'll just drink my expensive whiskey over here myself. So Tim Jim took a job where he could be an even bigger dick as a strike breaker. What Jim. That? What's that? What's a, stri- what's a strike breaker? Is this what the actual strikes, like union strikes? Yep. Like he would go and be like, get back to work, you little hippies. I, I yes, mean, essentially. Like bust up the union stuff. Yeah, he would go to what a strike would happen, and he would stop them from striking with really a, uh, nice and calm methods. Like when workers tried to shut down a train several miles south of town, he and his crew went in and handled it by shooting into the crowd. Oh, oh my God. That is a classic American way to deal with strikers. Well, if you're trying Jesus. to break a strike, there's not, I mean, how else are you supposed to do it? That's fucking What, with awful. words? Oh, man. Pussy. Right? Or, you got to just kill people because they're or standing listening, or listening the, to the demands yeah, of your workers seems... or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what kind of America you voted for. Unhappy with the fact that some of the workers fired back, Tim decided to go into business for himself. <laughs> he was unhappy that people shot back. How dare you? I'm just trying to make you work for the more, less nerve. wages. Seriously. And then punishing you with the death sentence for standing up for yourself. Yeah, well, you know. The TIC commercial agency, the Tim Isaiah Courtright commercial agency, provided... Did they do a lot of auditions? You yes. You think they're still looking for anyone? Probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they provided... I gotta look! <laughs> Provided protection to gambling dens and saloons in return for a portion of their profits. Mm, His like a business model situation. was very simple. Demand a cut in return for services and shoot the people who refused. Wow. That is, is pretty A to B. Right? Yeah. It's a very yeah. tough business uh, life in those days. I want to thank you guys all for coming to my investors meeting. I think that my plan is pretty secure and uh, pretty sure. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, we're going to offer them their, our business. Cool. And, I'm down. That sounds yeah, good. Yeah. And then uh, if they say no, we kill them. Yeah. Can you start over and say, hey, sharks? Hey, sharks. <laughs> there you, yeah. <laughs> there okay, go. I'm in. <laughs> hey, sharks, what would you What would you do if I told <laughs> you that I had a business plan that could never be turned down by anyone? I'm listening. I say I'm there. Yeah, yeah. you got my ear. <laughs> okay, I'll take, do you guys have guns? That's the first question. Of course. Oh, yeah, we're billionaires. How do you not have guns? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what do you do with your free time? Do you even need to hear the pitch at this point? Or are we good? Are we good? No, we're good. All we're right. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where do I sign? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you guys a ten percent like of my company for twenty million dollars. I, I like the cut of his jib or jib or tib. The cut of jib, his jib 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 jib's tib. Like, uh, do we get polo shirts with the company's logo embroidered on it? Yeah. Shockingly, he and Luke did not get on well. When Tim made his offer, Luke replied, "Why, Jim? I would rather pay you a good salary to stay away from my house entirely." Oh, I would take that, actually. That's a good that's line, like, yeah. I wish that's an easy would offer that. Yeah. 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 Any of you guys have any money you want to offer me to not hang out with you? I, I'm, I'm trying to make some cash. I'll take 300 a week if you guys yeah. are into it. What's, what's your agency? That, but that, on January but 23rd... On, but on agency. They sure. are just so 1887, great. 1887, long-haired Jim was Luke's smallest concern. His younger brother, Henry, who'd been living in nearby San Angelo with other short men, came to Fort Worth looking for help. Little guys. Yeah, I just realized how that read... <laughs> He was wanted for the shooting of a man back home and had neither the connections nor the money for a decent lawyer. Luke wanted to step in, but there was a slight problem. He didn't have the cash either. So on February 7th, he sold his stake in the white elephant to cover the legal fees. Did you say February 7th? Yes. That's Chris Rock's birthday. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Becky, look at her butt. He sold a stake. Oh my gosh! gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at her rear end. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a cow. Well, it seems like attic. she's nice. <laughs> yeah. So he sold a stake in the white elephant on the seventh, and on February eighth, Luke's hanging out in his now formal establishment when someone informed him that long-haired Jim was waiting outside and refused to come in. Luke's- but it's hot. We have lemonade. You sure? Does he know that? No, I only drink milk. 
and you. You mean cow juice? <laughs> cow juice. I do mean cow juice. If you could squeeze a whole cow into a little vial, I would mm. n- enjoy that. It's warm, just like it's, the temperature. It's out very here. dense. Mm. It's a little got a little ricotta floating on the top. Mm. Luke Look. sighed and went outside. Went, went out. You said he sighed. He sighed. <sighs> okay. God dang fuck it. this guy. Just kicking off my boots. About to shoot some cheek. He went outside where he found himself looking down the barrel of Tim's two pistols. Hey, doesn't that sound like a new sex thing? Shoot some cheek? Mm hmm. Sounds like an old sex thing. I guess you're right on that one, fellas. Fist bump. Doom, doom, doom. Okay. Unfazed, he reminded Tim Jim that since he had sold the bar, there was nothing left to settle as far as protection money. He said, I had sold my bar and I am unarmed. Great reading, Slayton. Don't you pull a gun on me, yelled Tim Jim as he took a step closer to preventing Luke to prevent Luke from drawing. Oh, it's like I'm there. As he pressed his gun against Luke's chest, the barrel got cut, got, got caught in Luke's in his watch chest chain. Hair? In the watch chain. Oh, I, I, his, his chest hair. Uh, his fob. Yes. <laughs> That's when Luke Short took his opportunity, reached into a hidden secret vest pocket containing his specially made short barreled 45 caliber. Whoa. Oh, fear. The first bullet took off Tim's shooting thumb. <laughs> oh. The drunkard tried a, a border real me, sh- myself, and Irene situation, huh? Yeah. The drunk- yes. Is this hair gel? That's the same movie. That's the uh, same directors, different film. The drunkard tried what's called a border <laughs> shift, switching his gun to the uninjured hand. But he was too slow. Luke Short fired four more shots into Tim Jim's chest. Sorry, Big Jim. He say was arrested. Had a Yahweh for me. <laughs> right? Is that what happened? Yeah, he, he did say Yahweh specifically. Yes. Yeah. Say Wait. shalom to Hashem, Joseph. <laughs> Uh, tell Bar- Baruch Hashem, motherfucker. <laughs> tell Jaw to burn one down for me if you can, you know? That's right. Uh, Luke was arrested on the spot and taken Praise to jail. Praise be Allah, right? <laughs> tell him in person. This is like The Buddha says that we'll come back better if we're better. <laughs> sure. Say hi to the atheist mm-hmm. math god and thank him for his equations, and feller. What, and whatever the Zoroastrianisms think. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Whatever the Zoroastrianisms think. Whatever they're into. Yeah, what are they? I don't know. Don't forget the Scientology handshake when you meet God. The next day, Tim had one of the fanciest Imagine funerals. Imagine fucking it up then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, you do it your whole life. You meet God and you... Oh, no, I was supposed to... Ah, Scientology handshake. I you. practiced this. Damn yeah. it. Oh, man. Eternal damnation? But, like, it's just a handshake. You should have studied harder. The next day, Tim Jim had one of the fanciest funerals in Fort Worth, Texas had ever seen. Did Hundreds. he sit up in his coffin? Boy, this is fancy. And then fall back down again? Yes. No. Hundreds of residents <laughs> came and paid their respects. As a tribute to Tim Jim... They decided it would be a nice thing to <laughs> lynch Luke Short. Oh, my God. We haven't seen enough bloodshed this weekend. I think we should also kill Luke. <laughs> but luckily. But luckily. A well that's fr- just, oh. just po- so much population control. Yeah, like right? just Everyone's dying well, constantly. That's, that's their Jerry Springer show. It's just like, well, let's hang someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything good on? Yeah, they're going to hang some guy. We're going to watch him squeam around as he dies. Luckily, a Bring well-armed... Bring the kids! Squeam around. Squirm around. Squirm. A know. well-armed Bat Masterson <laughs> stood guard over the jail until Bat the crowd Masterson. dispersed. Oh, yep. I thought that was you making it. Bat Masterson. Bat Masterson. Bat Masterson. No trial was held as Tim was an asshole and it was clearly a case of justifiable homicide. Are you serious? They didn't do any due process? It what, sounded like that was the due process. This is what I'm yeah. always bragging about to the foreign exchange students, and then when we get our chances, we're like, eh, just do the same thing they do yeah, in fucking fuck it. Why Dracula's not? country. You're still hanging out with foreign exchange yeah, students. Yeah, I'm good. Well, other people's. It's not my foreign exchange. Now 33 and financially <laughs> that makes stable, it, it was time for Luke to become an honest man. He married a girl, opened a new resort in Fort Worth, and traveled the country as he tried his hand at the world of professional sports. You said he opened a resort? Yeah, like a like really... Like there was a pool and a different a game room for the kids while the parents get massages? Sure. Yes, definitely. Strawberry daiquiris, mm-hmm. but... It, one small water slide. Yep. Ooh, well, yeah. it's Texas in the old days. He yeah. can't have a ton of water slides. Right, but he, raging he's waters. Trying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he now tried his hand at professional sports, traveling the country, splitting his time between gambling on and investing in horse racing, as well as pursuing his new interest as a boxing promoter. I like how those are all steady professions back in those days. Yeah. <laughs> like, now it's very, like, fringe living. But yeah. that, this, like, that was like, oh, what a commendable man. Yeah. After He's he a got horse. Of, he bets on the horses. He, after he left Dodge and wanted a more stable life, he took <laughs> up stand-up comedy in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he couldn't stay away from his favorite game of Pharaoh. Ugh. He I want it to be face carving. Bro, there's always a pyramid to make. I'm just saying, we're always open. Of course, uh, he partnered with a few men, including one Charles Wright, to run Pharaoh Games in Memphis, Tennessee. Charles Wright, can't go wrong. Call me anytime. But a partnership with gamblers is always a tough proposition. What happens? Why is Rather that? Rather than keep the bank winnings and the hotel safe as agreed, 
Charles decided the cash would be safer in his room. Right. Of course. Like a gambler. Yeah, he was wrong. Uh, after the inevitable robbery, Charles demanded that his partners bear equal share of the losses. They refused, and a feud was born. Perfect. On December 23rd, 1890, the disagreement between the men took a turn. That's when one Luke... day after my birthday. Congratulations, Luke. Oh, in 1890. Really? Yeah. yeah. Our back. birthdays have been mentioned in this story. Almost. That's right. Oh, well, one day after, but it's, you yeah. know, I always say it's a birthday week. The disagreement it's, it's took a turn year this year. Yeah, yeah, year when Luke right. showed up at a Pharaoh game run by Charlie and forced all the customers to leave at gunpoint. Oh, dude, there's just so much gun pointing in this story. I just love it. <laughs> it's I want this table to myself. Charlie heard the commotion from the other room and came in firing his shotgun. Came in firing. Yep. Luke took <laughs> buckshot. Just, yeah. just, <laughs> it's like I heard a sound and I'm going to come out yeah. here. What's all the racket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just curious. Yeah, I, the ceilings must look like shit in all these towns, right? It's just, just stucco falling on everything all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just all this redid drywall that everywhere. One. Yeah, it's like it's like a B roll from a fucking uh, Transformers movie. Just I just picture some young painter like everywhere. he f- puts the last like Dust. loving touch on the on the on the mustache of a cherub. Yeah, because it's a weird cherub. Yeah, sure. And then, uh, yeah, then a cherub sh- with a mustache, <laughs> huh? Yeah, why not? <laughs> that'd be, that'd be <laughs> a great crime really, right there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> your example was gonna be funny, but like we got caught up on the yeah, yeah, yeah. on the baby angel. <laughs> With facial hair. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that we missed anything. I think we found the gold before we yeah, had to dig too deep. Good. That was fucking great. Oh, what is this? A nugget? Just great. a little cherub with a Ron Jeremy a little stash sure, on there. It's yeah. just hilarious, dude. I love it. <laughs> there wasn't be a thing where like a gunshot hits. Yeah, all right. This is better. Honestly, this is better. He sighs and starts <laughs> yeah. over again in a sad loop that never ends. But whatever, it's fine. I we're fucked the up. Cherub with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Luke took Buckshot in his hip, leg, and hand before putting a bullet through Charlie's wrist. Good lord. Ooh, a wrist. Forcing they, we call that the Jesus shot. Forcing him to drop the gun. Ow, I can't hold on to shit since you fucked my wrist with your bull. Both hey. men stumbled away to safety. Your bullets. <laughs> Luke remains This bent. poor guy's having a stroke as well as being shot. Everyone that gets <laughs> shot in this story is like, couldn't the fate have been that all these bullets didn't fit the guns? <laughs> Why? Why, when it comes to shooting me, did the bullets fit the guns? Luke remained bedridden for months for, from clearly mortal injuries. Do you think he faked it? Or he's just like, I just, uh, okay. no one makes me take out the trash or do the litter box because they think I'm w- wounded. But under the care of his loving wife, he made a miraculous recovery. Honey, more iced tea and another BJ. I'm bleeding over here. <laughs> the biggest Sounds lasting better than going mark. to the barber. To me. Right? Yeah. You're right? Taking care of business? Yeah. The biggest lasting mark being the loss of most of his left thumb. Yeah, dude, you'll be fine, dude. Most of his left. Wow. Who the kid they did like without his it, fucking like all of his toes, right? Yeah, fuck, you, fuck your thumb. You'll be fine. What are you going to do? You think you're better than a chimpanzee? Both men were indicted on charges of assault with yes. intent to murder. While awaiting trial, Luke and his wife took a trip to Chicago to see the horses. Oh, is the crime as bad then as it is now? Late oh. in the evening back at their hotel, a drunken man made the mistake of accosting the couple in the lobby. Dude, why would you accost someone, especially a famous gunslinger? Not carrying his gun, Luke settled for shoving him to the ground, delivering a few swift kicks, then throwing the man outside. Oh, so he didn't, like, kill him physically? No, just emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this really put me in my place. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> his wife's like, honey, go back in there. You, you changed that guy's perspective on his own, like, inner demons. I can never go back to the hotel again. <laughs> He's weakened. He's weakened, honey. Concerned the man might return for Get vengeance. Get Jordan Peterson in there and talk to him for an hour. <laughs> Luke went to his room and grabbed his pistol before joining his wife for a drink. And then what happened? Did when they he have returned sex? to the Did lobby, they have hot, steamy 1800 sex. When he came Ooh. back downstairs, the drunk was back in the lobby. Taking off 10 pairs of underwears and then getting it on. I love a good petticoat. Mm, I like all kinds of petting. A house coat. Heavy petticoat. A frock. Mm. Yeah, everything smells all antique. Mm, that's the best kind of sex. When things smell antique, all oaky. Furious, Luke drew his pistol and charged, but was intercepted by a hotel clerk who informed him that the man was not, in fact, the same drunkard, oh. but an actor named William F. Hoey. Oh, did he get famous after that, though, and get some gigs finally? Uh, enough so that his, that his date of birth and death is listed. <laughs> oh, so, wow. yeah. oh, he died. Yeah, yeah eventually. What's, oh, his, he did. what's his IMDb like? Luke, embarrassed that he almost killed the wrong man, apologized and treated the actor to drinks and dinner. Oh, dude, see, it worked out well. It was like yeah. in it was, it was like in a movie with, uh, with Will Ferrell where the guy right. runs a rear ends him and he gets to is meet the guy. Is this gonna be like a surprise ending where like this, the building collapses and everyone dies in the thing? A few months later, he was found guilty of assaulting Charles Wright and fined one hundred and fifty dollars. That's it. Yeah. Which today would be what? Seven hundred bucks? Something like that. Hey, that's a easy. He's a businessman. Oh, yeah, Seven hundred yeah. bucks, right? Very easy. In eighteen ninety-three, something was seriously wrong with Luke's health. His face was puffy, 
and liquid accumulated in his legs, consumption. making it difficult for him to walk. Consumption. Consumption. Right? Diagnosed with the dropsy. Oh, the dropsy is a great one. Right? What's that? I thought that was a skateboarding trick. It's, yeah. What's a dropsy? <laughs> yeah, he, he diagnosed with, man, you've been trying this for too long. You can't get it. Yeah. yeah. This is a cowboy with a skateboard. He's like, yep. what you do is you go to the lip of the pool and yes. you just fucking go nose first. It's a dropsy. Man, I have nolly. It's really starting to hurt my knees. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes. Dude, I, I, I tray flipped my back and it's just really killing. My mother died when I was very young of kick flipping. Yeah. <laughs> it was... So, so, uh, there's Rick goes on like, oh yeah, what if you had a nose grind? Someone's like, yeah, my, actually my nose is is gone now, and this sure, is this yes. is a very offensive rift from a uh, pop shove it. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? No. Okay, okay sure. Oh. What's the question? Well, I forgot it after you said no. I deleted <laughs> it. My RAM completely emptied after you said that. I was like, oh okay, no point in holding on to it. Dropsy, now known as edema. Oh okay, yeah. edema, which I also don't know what that means. I've just heard of it. Just a lot of liquid in your in your, in your shit is all fucked up. Okay. Yeah. So he just can, he needs to change his diet, maybe. He's, he's just, just, just kind of fucked up, man. Okay. <laughs> Basically, well, he's what, fucked up. Yeah. He, and this, this seems like not the shortest life for back then. Luke moved to Gueda Springs. I can, I'm probably mispronouncing that uh, read offensively. It? Let me see the paper. G-U-E-D-A. -E -E Guido Springs. Guido <laughs> Springs, Kansas. That can't be it right. Hey, fucking welcome to the fucking town. Our population, like, uh, I don't know, my mother cooks so well. Do you want a mud mask or something? Yeah, how you doing, huh? Hey, don't be bringing any of your front flips in here. I don't need that on my girls. Uh, he moved there in the hopes that the climate and the famous healing water of the spring would save his life. Oh, gosh. So he was a How new ager? On September 8th, 1893, Luke Short died at the age of 39. Oh. Luke, you just said that he lived all along. He I was thought 39. It, it seemed longer in my mind. Two days later, a line of carriages more than a mile long followed his body to Oakwood Cemetery in Fort Worth. Luke had already purchased his own gravestone. It was a plain, Depressing. upright marker. That is a, no, it's just forward thinking. It's, it looked planning, looking ahead. It's a plain, upright marker with the simple inscription, L.L. Short, 1854 to 1893. Wow, he didn't even make it to the, the, the swing in 1900s or whatever we mm -hmm, call it. No. Oh, man. He could have seen World War One. I. I mean, all the fun he could have had. <laughs> hey, the Depression. Deli mustard gas. He missed out on some cool inventions. Totally, dude. Space flight. Huh? Sure. Women shaving some of their pussies? I mean, like, he missed sure. a lot of stuff. Bathing costumes into bathing suits, maybe? Oh, yeah. boy. Right? Sure, yeah. Women the... dancing in beaded outfits? Right? Mm -hmm. Corn dogs, compact disc players. The World's Fair. Right? Yeah, World Fair. Right? Well, Old Corvettes. He could have... I thought there were world fairs in the 1890s. Atari. I'm actually not sure when that started. Hmm? I feel like it was 1900s, but I could be wrong. Hovercraft. It's, it's definitely 18. Cures for cancer. Robot sex dolls. Mm -hmm. so flying that's, saucers. So he, so he dies travel. of sick. I, I, yeah. He, that, yeah. He died a. He died a. Not a warrior's death. Tell you that internet? much. The pussy. Well, Cell not phones? for lack of them trying though. He had a few bodies. Snowboarding Fair wasn't enough. even invented. I know. Hmm? Talking to dolphins on your undersea sp uh, spaceship or whatever. God, that mo that show sucks. Are you trying to talk shit on Sequest? Sequest was great. Garbage. Oh, no, Sequest was great. Garbage. It was like Star you know, Trek, but with Ryan Sequest. Right. You already know that I hate this yeah. show, and now you're just being mean to me by bringing it up well, on the Well, you air. never appreciated when they talked to Darwin the Dolphin, and that's the part that really got Today's me. Today's sources include Famous Gunfighters of the Western Frontier by Bat Masterson himself. Whoa. Batman's writing books? The Notorious that's Luke Short, Sporting Man of the Wild West by Jack DeMatos, Mateos, Armatos, and Chuck Parsons. Draw, The Greatest Gunfights in the American West by James Reasoner. History.net, thealignet.com, AmericanCowboyChronicles.com, and the Evil Robots at, at Wikipedia. Wikipedia. And thanks once again to Al Bamani for, oh, uh, yeah. for putting in so much work Thank you, on Al. finding the, 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 the material for this story and helping craft it on the front end. That's Crime Tribe right there. Yep, we did, we, we did some shit, so uh, say what's up to him, give him a little shout. And that is the story of Luke Short. Yes. Wow. I, it still rings like whenever you say it. Like, yeah. In my, I, I want to respond to it. This entire show is difficult for you to handle? Yes. You think yeah. you might die of edema at 39? I, got, I, ho I hope so. That's I mean, you're on, you're I on a good, you're on, you're, dude, you're off to a hot start, and I believe in you. Whatever you want to achieve, you can do it. That's I right. could, I could get some dropsy. Yeah. yeah. Get dude. some of the dropsy. So get some dropsy, dude. Yeah, you're not, you're not undropsy ish. Yeah. You know? I feel it in I'm you. droopy. You're droopy? Am I, yeah. Meh. Just yes. don't get board slide. That'll be dangerous. Sure, yes. No. Front side board side. No, no, no. You no. can uh, follow the show on all the social medias at CrimePod, C-R-I-I-I-M-E-P-O-D. You can follow Luke Schwartz at Luke Does Stuff. At Luke Does Stuff on Twitter. At, uh, you, I'm on Instagram. It's oh, yeah. embarrassing. Instagram's great. No, your Instagram's fun. You can fun. see his middle help, finger help, a thousand help, help, times help. over so at help 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 help, 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 help. It's four helps. And it's four? That was three. Four helps. Four helps? Three was taken. Yeah, that's too many helps now. Yeah, No, it's not. Three was like... 
that's the rhythm, and then you need the fourth to be like, what if was it again? If you want to see help. Luke's middle finger, go to help, help, yes. help, help on Instagram. Yes. And uh, I have a live show uh, last Saturday at the end, last Saturday of the month at the Hollywood Improv at 11 p.m. Stuart Thompson and I do a talk show. And it's it's probably the best show you'll ever go to. It's pretty much amazing. And uh, you guys have a podcast as well. We have a podcast called The Late Night Pod, Late Night Podcast with Stuart and Luke. Uh, it's very hard to find, but if you type all the words, it's there. Awesome. Yeah. You know, if you're using mm. uh, Laughable, maybe you can find it by just clicking on Luke's face, and then it'll take you to his thing. I don't know if they're on. They should I don't be know on if laughable. I have a profile. Well, you need to get on Laughable. Well, yeah, if not, so. then uh, then fuck his entire show and just ignore him for the rest wow. of your life. Slayton, you're you a father now. Us you got to support more. Yeah, you can email us at Crime Thank Pod. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're you're, great. We're happy to That's have so you. Fun, this dude. was really fun. That's so much fun. Email the show, crimepodcast at gmail.com, one I or three, for any questions you have, story ideas, dick pics, label those for chefs. Of course, mm. there is the subreddit for crime now. You can jump on there. Ooh, you got uh, a subreddit. We have a subreddit. That's I have really not cool. been updating a bunch lately because of the baby and the job and such, but there'll be oh, wait, more coming. Wait, you update it? I, I put stuff on. I mean, our listeners do too, but I usually I put some of our stuff oh, on there as well. I thought it was all for listen. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I'm, no I, they do, but you're padding yeah, stats. Yes. Our listeners put stuff, but I also put stuff there that's like in other things you might not have or whatever. Just trying sure. to connect and sure, get sure, sure, Just sure. trying to be a part of the community, bro. I love bro. social media and the Yeah, internet. that's what I do. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? Oh, just social. Yes, it makes it cool. Although Instagram's really fun. I love Instagram. We I love so each one, fun. every one of you, and we a do. personal, we appreciate and every one of you. thing. I'm ambivalent towards you. All of our new Patreon subscribers, super fucking stoked. We'll have some cool stuff for you soon and shout outs and all that good stuff and buy robot yeah guys be good out there be silly have fun